Mm, you ain't on it. Yeah, that was a good clap too. Let's try to do it again. Welcome, Welcome back to our, our second channel, channel beautiful, beautiful people. Peoples. Your sound is dry anyway. No, your sound dry. Yours. No, your first time. Oh, That's whatever. Right. How's everyone on that side of the camera? I hope everyone is doing well. Everyone on this side of the camera is doing lovely. No complaints. Y'all already know what video we're doing for y'all beautiful people today because y'all clicked on it. And the video is, I just happened to pick it. And the video is, 10 Dumbest Criminals in the World. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen this in it. I haven't seen this yet. And neither have Miss Brandy. We just That's wanted me. to do... A little bit something different than either doing a you know watching stand up or something like that so yeah that's the reason why i picked it we get back into our old ways mm -hmm. i mean yeah i ain't changing but i'm just saying we used to do these a lot um I liked a lot plus we like watching criminal stuff we watch fresh for the age mm -hmm. we watch a lot of crime shows somewhat that's right because we ain't no criminals so we were really yeah. some criminals uh -huh. <laughs> we should we should try to stop hmm. What? I can say, hey, hey, you guys, how you doing? I was in the in the back while Mama did all the talking. She showed out today. But let's just leave it to this y'all, cause I'm ready. Here we go. I'm trying to see some criminals. <laughs> hey guys, it's Chris. From the car chase foiled by an empty gas tank to the dumbest criminals in Florida and the crazy stuff you won't believe they tried to get away with. Here are ten of the dumbest criminals ever. Number 10, Permanent Marker Masks. The award for the dumbest yet most creative criminal goes to both Matthew McNally and Joey Miller, the two guys with perhaps the worst master plan in history. Matthew and Joey were a little bit hard up on cash and couldn't afford the traditional burglar outfits, meaning no black suits and no black masks either. So they did the next best thing. They painted masks over their faces using permanent marker. Of course, the permanent marker didn't do so much to cover, well, anything really. It looked exactly like normal, except covered in permanent marker. <laughs> so how did they get busted? Police stopped their car after somebody reported two men with paint on their faces trying to break into a house in Iowa. Mm -hmm. The caller told the police the two suspects were wearing dark clothing and that they drove off in a white car. The white car was a 1994 Buick Roadmaster, oh, not exactly the most inconspicuous vehicle <laughs> for doing a robbery. After the police stopped the car, they found the suspects with beards and mustaches drawn on their faces. How old were these brilliant burglars? Well, they were in their early 20s, but that's not really an excuse for such an outrageously bad idea. Both were charged with attempted burglary, they never actually managed to steal anything, and the driver was charged with a DUI. Hopefully by the time they have their day in court, their disguises will have washed off. <laughs> Number 9. Out of Gas In Berry Hill, Tennessee, a police chase came to a rather underwhelming end. It all happened on a Monday morning when a man named Richard Ewing walked into a shop and flashed a message written on a piece of paper that said, Quick and easy, give me cash. Richard then said he had a gun and went behind the counter and stole cigarettes and stuffed his pockets full of cash. But according to the investigator with the Berry Hill Police Department, Richard didn't even have a gun. He was faking it. He also stole a handful of lottery tickets as he ran out the door. Richard got into his beat-down old minivan which he had parked at the car wash and then drove down the road without his headlights on. Unfortunately for Richard, he pulled into the main street right in front of a cop. <laughs> the officer flashed Richard. her lights, but oh, Richard shit. kept on going. Within just 60 seconds of chasing Richard, he came to a slow stop and pulled over on the side of the road. Much to his dismay, he'd run out of gas. There wasn't much left for Richard to do at that point. He got out of the car, acted confused, asking the officers what the problem was. He was even quoted as saying, why are you guys jamming me up like this? <laughs> well, Richard was arrested and he was taken into custody and he went to jail on charges of aggravated robbery. Number Richard's eight, Florida's dumbest criminals. Two men have just been dubbed the dumbest criminals in all of Florida, and yeah, that title is pretty spot on. Robert Hobby and Marcus Reeves are not the brightest bulbs in the cupboard. They went on a crime spree and left behind a trail of evidence that allowed the police to track them down and arrest them with shocking efficiency. The crime spree happened inside the city limits of Ocala and in the surrounding county. The pair broke into a handful of convenience stores, looted cigarettes and lottery tickets, and were having a grand old time. 
But as they were breaking into these convenience stores, they were being recorded by security cameras. They were also smoking cigarettes inside the stores and leaving behind their cigarette oh, butts. Oh, okay, hold on. But that's not all they left behind. <laughs> Police officers also discovered a shoe that belonged to one of the criminals, oh, and Marcus God. Reeves at one point dropped his wallet that had his driver's license mm. in it. Mm. All the police had to do was look at the address on the license, drive over to that house, and <laughs> knock on the door. <laughs> Marcus confessed immediately, and then both men were arrested. They were made for These two lazy mm -hmm. criminals were then charged with 14 counts of grand theft and burglary. In court, there would be no denying their participation in these crimes. The evidence was beyond overwhelming. Number 7. Robbing the Dollar Store so if you were to dollar embark store. on a brazen daylight robbery, you'd probably pick somewhere places. better than the dollar store. But Matthew Allen Harvey from Timmonsville, South Carolina, had his criminal eyes set on a dollar general, pretty much the opposite of a place you'd want to rob. According to the police reports, Harvey walked through the door of the Dollar General, strolled around for a bit as if he were shopping, then approached the counter and placed the items down by the cash register. He told the clerk to ring up the items and open up the register. Once the register was open, Harvey demanded all the money from the drawers, but no change or $1 bills. Demanding no $1 bills from a literal dollar store seems ridiculous, <laughs> but that is what happened. We don't know exactly how much money Harvey got from his robbery, but it couldn't have been much. Even dumber than robbing a store that probably has less than 50 bucks in the register is that Harvey left all the items he had touched on the counter. Mm -hmm. Investigators easily lifted his fingerprints from a bottle of dishwashing liquid and then arrested him just a handful of days later. Why do you think this guy chose to rob a dollar store? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Premature Confession James Washington was an inmate in a Nashville prison when he suffered a seizure and thought he was going to die. The sentence James was serving was from a second-degree murder conviction in 2006. He only had to do 15 years in jail and probably would have been out earlier on good behavior, but after his seizure attack in 2009, he thought it was all over for him. So to get his conscience clean before he died, James admitted to a murder that he had committed in 1995. Mm -hmm. He'd apparently murdered a woman named Joyce Goodener. The crime was never solved. The woman's body was found stabbed, beaten with a cinder block, stuffed inside of a carpet, and burned. And he'd gotten away with the crime for 17 years. Mm -hmm. James thought he did a good thing by revealing the truth. He'd be able to go into the afterlife with a clean slate, though to be quite honest, I'm not really sure how that works. Mm -hmm. In any case, he recovered fully from his seizure. James was given a clean bill of health and a positive outlook on living probably for another 25 or 30 years. Unfortunately for him, his sentence was increased to life in prison, <laughs> and now he'll never see the light of day yeah, again. Dummy. At his trial for the 17-year-old murder, James claimed that after his seizure, he was hallucinating and that the confession wasn't real. <laughs> Prosecutors didn't believe him, and according to ABC but News, the court the very quickly mm -hmm. convicted him of the murder and kept him locked up tight. Number 5. Failed Payout A couple tried to burn down their house and collect the insurance money. This isn't exactly a new crime. The insurance companies are pretty used to dealing with claims like this. But this investigation turned into something absolutely bizarre. It all started with Carol Ann and her partner, Laura Jean Stutt. The couple had accused one of their neighbors of vandalizing their property. A rather nasty word was written on the white facade of their garage, something most people would consider a hate crime. After the hate crime was recorded by the couple and reported to the police, their house ended up being burned down. The couple blamed their neighbor, Janice Millsaps, saying she'd burned down their house because of their sexual orientation. And in today's climate, that seemed legit. With their house in ruins, the couple was hoping to collect the insurance payout of over $275,000, and that's a handsome sum of money. Naturally, the neighbor denied having anything to do with the fire or any related hate crime. The police investigation and the insurance company's investigation uncovered that it was actually Carol and Laura who had burned down their own house. They have since been charged with arson, and because, well, they didn't have a house anymore, they're both homeless criminals. <laughs> Talk about a plan yeah, backfiring. A Get it? Backfiring? Number four, <laughs> the fake cop. A man in the Bronx was pulled over by police while driving at around 1 a.m. in the morning. The man's name was Mata Jones, and the reason he was pulled over was that his windows were tinted. They were so tinted that they were in violation of the law. And this in and of itself isn't that stupid of a crime. A lot of people actually do this. The stupid part came after when the police realized Mudda Jones was impersonating an officer. He exited the car wearing a Kevlar vest labeled police. He also had a police badge hung around his neck on a chain. Police believe he was imitating an officer to commit home invasions more easily. Obviously, the cops didn't believe his disguise for a second. 
He didn't hold himself like a cop. His disguise was actually ridiculous to anyone who'd actually ever seen a real cop before. And the whole thing fell apart for Mr. Jones. According to the New York Daily News, he was charged with possession of a weapon. Oh yes, there was a 9mm handgun under the driver's seat. And criminal impersonation, forgery, and a handful of other offenses. Number 3. KFC Bomb Threat Two teens have been arrested for the stupidest prank ever. These kids were only 18 and 16, and they thought it was hilarious to call in a bomb threat at their local KFC restaurant. It may have been funny for them, but it was terrifying for the employees of Kentucky Fried Chicken and their customers. The KFC had to evacuate everyone in clothes, and while this was happening, the rambunctious teenagers were driving through the streets, firing a BB gun out their window. They actually managed to injure somebody in the street by firing a fake gun at them, and they even blew out the windshield of a parked car at the Walmart. The kids may have been just messing around, but the cops took it very no. seriously. The older boy was charged with the false bomb threat battery, criminal mischief, and shooting an occupied vehicle. The other kid was charged with accessory and handed back to his parents. The 18-year-old was held on a bond of $9,000 and will probably do some time while the other kid goes home and gets grounded. Number 2. Facebook mm -hmm. Busted A man named John Morgan II is definitely one of the dumbest criminals ever. <laughs> the first dumb thing he did was rob the savings bank in Pickaway County. You either have to be Jason Statham or really stupid to rob an actual bank in 2021. It wasn't a great decision, but what's really crazy is that John may have gotten away with the brazen crime had he just been a little more discreet about it. After taking all that cash home, John decided to brag about it on the internet. He took to what has become the downfall of many John. dumb criminals over the past decade, Facebook. He uploaded posts of himself all over Facebook, mm. holding up the loot he took from the bank. Yeah, he took selfies is, uh, of himself with a fat stack of cash <laughs> and uploaded them for Got roughly it, six uh, billion people to see. You know who saw those photos? The local police. John was arrested and sentenced to three years in prison by all? Judge P. Randall Neese. The judge also ordered that John repay the roughly $6,000 he got from the bank, but the story isn't over yet. John was assisted by his equally dumb girlfriend, Ashley DeBeau, who also pled guilty. She was charged with being complicit to the robbery and sentenced to serve two years. She was also sentenced to help her dumb boyfriend repay that $6,000. Number one, back to jail. In Arkansas, a man was released from police custody. This is supposed to be a happy day for a criminal. And to be the day he vowed to turn his life around and never go back to jail. Well, Cordell Coleman was not that kind of criminal. He walked outside from the jail, took a look around, and decided he would steal a cop car. That's right, he walked out of prison and stole a cop car before even going more than 20 feet. It was 2.40 in the morning, and Cordell drove away from the Pulaski County Jail in a very clearly marked 2018 Ford Explorer cop car. How exactly did he get into the car? An officer had just pulled up and was booking a prisoner. He hadn't expected someone to get into his unlocked car and take it. He walked back outside to find his patrol vehicle gone. As you can probably imagine, the cops are pretty good at tracking down their own stolen cars. They got Cordell before he had even gone 10 miles. They actually found him parked outside of an apartment complex, still sitting inside the vehicle. He was arrested and then returned to lockup. And this time, they're probably not going to let him out. Thanks for watching. Do you feel sorry for any of these not so bright criminals? Uh, um, let me know in the comments. No. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. We'll see you next time. Hell no, I don't feel sorry for not. Neither one of them. They is crazy. Especially the one that, uh, that could have got away with it. You chose to. Ooh, what's going on now? But you chose to post it. That's why I say people shouldn't post all what they do on this social media but when you have a dumb dumb that's what usually happens now he could have got away with six thousand dollars because the time they gave him i was like that's all but then when they said the amount because i told doc that he took more than that but mm -hmm. yeah yeah all ten of them is some dumb 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 dumbs dumb dumbs dumb dumb dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> Compared to the crimes I've done, I wouldn't serve no time. I ain't done no crimes, but I'm just saying these people just don't be thinking, especially the um. First off, the fire one. If you have ever seen any show where a house get caught on get caught on fire and it's like a real actual show, it's not scripted or anything, mm -hmm. you already know. They always go to the homeowners first. Yeah. It's always the home homeowners, and they don't find something through the homeowner. Then they go see what everything else is. Mm -hmm. Y'all is out of a house and a home. 
Because y'all wanted to collect $275,000. Mm-hmm. That you didn't even collect. Mm-mm. So y'all both in jail for what? For nothing, basically. And then what was the other one? The one they said the one in Florida mm -hmm. when they left the they wasn't named for crime. I don't know what made them think it was So left all that Yeah. <laughs> this wallet shit. Yeah, <laughs> was you might as well go ahead. No, but, but they ain't built for no crimes mm -hmm. at all. They need to go get them a legitimate job mm -hmm. and sit their bus down some mm -hmm. Cause uh Not one of those That's not that. That's not it. Not at all. Not at all. I'll see if there's any more I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Happy year. Ooh. 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 